problem really is banks are not organized around customers. Taking the service of banking to the customer when and where they need it. Hi, I'm Bruno Aziza, and today I'm sitting down with Brett King. Thank you very much for your time, Brett. Right, Bruno. Good to so, meet Brett, you. you are the author of Bank to Doro, and uh, you have worked with the biggest HSBC, Citi, uh, and some of the largest banks in, in, in the world. In fact, you've got 15 uh, plus years of experience, and you're very passionate about customer experience and the future of banking. Do you want to take us through where banks are going in the next 10 to 20 years? Well, let, let's start maybe with what's happening in the banking environment. Mm -hmm. This is probably the first time in the history of banking that we've had the level of disruption that we're currently experiencing in the banking sector. And it started really with internet banking because internet banking gave us choice, control. You know, suddenly we were thrust into a world where 11 o'clock at night, you know, we could pay our bills instead of having to allocate time to go down to a physical location between the hours of nine to three. Mm -hmm. And then more recently with the Blackberry and uh, you know, app phones, uh, uh, smartphones, being able to have a rich content experience on the move. And, and now we see mobile payments coming to the fore. These are extremely disruptive behaviors for banking because the way we have traditionally banked based on the physical instruments around banking, cash, checks, branches, those physical elements are no longer a differentiator. They don't make banking special. In fact, banking's become very much utility. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's like you, you turn the switch on and the light comes on and it works. You don't, you don't say, wow, that's great. Same with banks. You know, when you put your card in the ATM machine and you get cash out, you don't say, I'm glad that worked today. So yeah. ba banking's become pretty much utility. And in that respect, you know, what banks think is their differentiation, their physical distribution network, the fact that they have a lock on cash, well, those things are no longer going to be a differentiation in the new world. So you see this movement from being very physical to a much less physical world. You also have this, this how this impacts analytics. I think when you think about analytics in the banking world, yeah. you think a lot about risk. And you, you, you've, you've written about this cultural move to, from risk to customer experience. You want to take us to, to what that is? Yeah, banks have so much information about our customers, mm -hmm. um, but we don't really use that. We, Why is that? Uh, the culture within banking per se is that, you know, you have silos around products. So the credit card team essentially competes for your business with the mortgage team, with the savings team. There's, there's no consolidated view within banks of a customer. Now we see lot of, lots of banks are talking about a single view of the customer and replacing their core systems to move from transaction banking to customer centric banking. But the problem really is banks are not organized around customers. They're organized about what a bank delivers in terms of product and service. But products don't differentiate banks anymore. Right. Um, service can, but how do you encourage a service culture when you have the credit card team doesn't want to tell the internet team about you know what they're doing with their customers because the internet team then may go and sell uh, you know the product online and our metrics will be damaged and my bonus will be less. Yeah. So th th there's there's a challenge. That's. That's one of the, the answers. And so I think what you're talking about is not just applicable for financial services organizations. This is sure. probably true for many other industries. Uh, but you're talking about really the opportunity to move from a place where you're using data to really cover yourself on risk to a place where you're using data across the organization to use the opportunity of serving your customers better Correct. and ultimately uh, generate more profit. In your book, you talk about this idea of point of impact. Do you want to tell us uh, how that works? Conceptually, banking for the longest time has been uh, focused on, on the branch and you come to us if you want a home loan and then you jump through these hoops that we call an application process and if we like you, yeah. we will deliver that, so we'll give you an option to take that service. It's like a privilege to bank with us. Sure. Um, but what's happening as a result of disintermediation around technology and technology adoption it's, it's so much easier for us to create new ways of banking and new ways to deliver products and services. So the question now becomes, when and where do I need banking? Right. And previously, you know, I'll say, stop what you're doing and come to me as a bank. Sure. And then we'll negotiate and then I'll give you the product or service. Then you can go back. So, like interruption banking. <laughs> right? Um, so, uh, but that's not the best place. Having you come to us is not the best way of negotiating a relationship these days. 
travel insurance is a good example. If you want to plan a trip and you're on a website like Expedia or an airline website, that's the place I need to offer you travel insurance based on our preferred relationship as a, as a bank and a customer. Not say, well, if you need travel insurance, you can come into our branch or you can look on our website. I've got to think about where my product or service impacts you as a consumer. Or maybe if you're at an auction on a Saturday sure. bidding for a home and you need to know how much can I afford to bid in this auction, Currently, today, you couldn't do that with a bank because we'll say, well, hang on, you know, if you want a home loan, you have to come you back and talk and to us and stop and negotiate. But if I'm there with my mobile device and I have a relationship with the bank and you'll tell me and then I can bid, well, that's very useful. So delivering banking products and services to the customer when and where they need it is really going to be the core skill of, of banks in the future. And so when I listen to you, Brett, and you know, all of this sounds great and, and, and it's very uh, positive to think about it, but, but I also look at the stats and you know, 76% of consumers still go in the branch uh, only 1.7% of, of clients use the mobile platform that banks provide to them. So clearly, it seems like consumers want the physical relationship with banks. Am I missing something here? There's a lot of misunderstanding about these stats that get thrown out. Sure. The key problem here is that customers today are extremely time poor, and they would use these digital channels if they could use them in a constructive way. The problem is most of the time when customers go to the web, or they you know, bring out their mobile device, the bank doesn't support them. So you try and apply for a product online, and you can't. You know, you want to engage with your bank and find out what your balance is and transfer money and pay a bill or pay you know, your friend on your mm -hmm. mobile phone, but they don't have an app, right? So uh, part of the reason that they're not using these channels constructively, and this hasn't occurred, is it's just not the support. It's not available. The banks aren't thinking about the journey the customer takes. The banks are thinking about the, the end of that journey, which is the transaction or the product, but they're not thinking how the customer gets to that end result. And when you start thinking about the journey the customer takes, that opens you up to some really great opportunities. And the web and mobile are obviously going to be key parts of that movie. So there are two things that I'm hearing re really here is in, in the opportunity for a bank or even a consumer, the opportunity using the data beyond just risk, but also to increase the customer experience. I think sure. that's one, because when you look at data for risk and you look at data for customer experience, you might be looking at different things. I think the second thing you mentioned is making sure the services from a bank standpoint get to where the end user or the end consumer is going to be on the mobile and the web and yeah. so forth. Is there any other things that you want to share with our C-level or sure. CIOs watching this show? Well, it's very interesting today, if we want to sell you a product as a bank, what we do is we obviously have our brand that's out there, but we run a campaign, an advertising campaign. So every month we have a different campaign. You know, January is going to be mortgage product, February's sure. credit cards, you know, and this is how we traditionally go and acquire new customers. But the, the mechanisms for those broadcast advertising are breaking down. So, you know, print, print ads aren't working as, as well as they used to. TVCs, only 16% of TVCs in the States get any ROI. Uh, you know, uh, uh, direct mail, there's less direct mail being sent this year than in 1990. So you look at these traditional mechanisms we have of acquiring customers and they're not working anymore. So how will you reach customers with your message? I don't think it's about the message. I think it's about understanding what customers do and engaging them. And so you have to start thinking differently about give a message and a customer will respond to that message and then come to you as the bank. We have to start talking about pervasive banking, taking the service of banking to the customer when and where they need it. Now, creating those journeys or creating offers and platforms for creating an offer and then eliciting a response that starts a journey that skill doesn't exist in a bank today. Oh. We have marketers that know how to do campaign marketing. But if you asked a banker, well, I need someone who's going to take the Bose behavioral analytics and generate a journey or an experience for a customer, they wouldn't even know, who, well, is that an IT job? Is that uh, the web team do that? So this is a very different view of how to engage customers, and, and it's a skill that's missing. And we go back to where we started, which is your passion around customer experience. I think it's applicable, again, not just to financial services, but many organizations uh, that are trying to do marketing with end customers. The rules of marketing and changing social media is a great example Absolutely. of that. Thank you very much for great your time, to meet Brett. You, Bruno. Thank you. Until next Thank time, you. I'm Bruno Ziza.